Hi, my name is Michael. These are the stories of African American men and women, heroes of the Revolutionary War, patriots that love their country, but for some unknown reason has not got the credit for fighting for freedom. These are their stories. Let us speak for them. The Seeds of Revolution In the 16 and 1700s, thousands of people from Europe came to North America. By 1732, 13 British colonies stretched along the North America eastern coast. The colonists followed customs and obeyed laws from Europe. There were 2 million Europeans and about 500,000 African slaves. The American colonies wanted their freedom from British rule because of rising taxes. That's what started the Revolutionary War. British troops arrived in Boston to force the colonists to obey British laws. The army only made things worse. The colonists saw the soldiers as proof that Britain intended to destroy freedom in the American colonies. Christmas Addicts, Runaway Slave, the first martyr in the fight between the colonies and their mother country, England. Christmas Addicts is a martyr because he was the first to give his life for freedom. As an adult, Addicts was a slave. More than anything, Christmas wanted to be free. Unable to buy his freedom, he ran away. A runaway slave, 6 foot 2, 27 years of age. Addicts disappeared completely. 20 years later, Addicts was back in Boston. He worked as a rope maker for the ships in the Boston Harbor. No one knew he was a runaway slave. Protesters gathered on the evening of March 5, 1770 to protest the rise in taxes. Many protesters threw snowballs and rocks at the British soldiers. Leading the way was a giant of a man, Crispus Addicts. This runaway slave urged his fellow Americans to stand up against the British soldiers. Crispus Addicts, a escaped slave for over 20 years, a black man, loved America. He was the first to die for freedom in 1770. At the Boston Massacre, as a crowd of colonists, armed with sticks and clubs, tried to defend the Boston Harbor and gave their lives for freedom against the British soldiers. These were true patriots. In 1858, historian William C. Neal and others started a Christmas Addicts Day. Citizens of Boston used that day to honor those who died in the fight for freedom. In later years, this day of celebration was replaced by the 4th of July. When General George Washington took command of the Continental Army, blacks were not allowed to join. The freezing, starving experience of war changed that. Many whites left the army and soldiers were needed. Because the British were offering freedom to blacks who served on their side, the Continental Army began to welcome them. In fact, Rhode Island had an all-black regiment which won honors for bravery. It seemed blacks could hardly be expected to fight for a country that kept them in slavery. Yet 5,000 brave slaves, as well as free blacks, served bravely on the side of the Patriots. Blacks were among the Minutemen in the first military skirmish of the Revolution at Concord, Massachusetts. They made contributes in every major battle, including Yorktown. And even the Continental Army accepted blacks into the ranks. Some states did not. In South Carolina and Georgia, few blacks were allowed to bear arms. In all the colonies, slaves and free men, blacks who had never been slaves or had bought their freedom, played a big part in the war. They built forts, dug trenches, and made other preparations for battle. Some masters sent their slaves into war to take their places. Others allowed the slaves to go to war and the masters received their pay. As the struggle for the nation's freedom grew, more and more blacks became involved in the fight to secure their personal freedom from slavery. Freed men had begun to organize a movement to gain freedom for all blacks in America. Though blacks fought alongside whites during the revolution, only a small number appear in the history books. Peter Salem, hero, patriot, minute man. Born a slave in Framingham, Massachusetts, Salem was freed by his owner so that he could sign up with the Patriot Army. Several months after he fought in the Battle of Concord, he was among soldiers fighting at Bunker Hill. Salem, a crack shot, became a hero in this battle when he shot and killed British Major John Picard. The officers had ordered the Patriots to retreat, but Salem refused. Instead, he loaded his musket again and again and fired and fired. The musket he used in battles displayed at Bunker Hill Memorial, Massachusetts. It is reported that white soldiers 
probably present itself to General George Washington as a man who killed the British officer at Bunker Hill. Selim fought also in the Battle of Saratoga and Stony Point. Peter Selim left the army. He later married and settled in Lexington, Massachusetts for a time. He earned his living as a basket weaver. Eventually he returned to his native city where he died on August 16, 1816. In 1862 the city of Framingham uh, placed a memorial over his grave that read, Here lies Peter Selim, a hero of the Revolutionary War. Austin Daphne, artilleryman hero. If a slave owner did not want to serve as a soldier in the Revolutionary War, he could send his slave in his place. Austin Daphne's master sent him. Daphne was one of the few blacks in the South allowed to man heavy guns. Many Southern blacks were not allowed to bear arms of any kind. As a member of artillery in the Georgia crop, Daphne fought hard under Colonel Elijah Clark. He fought in the Battle of Cowpens in South Carolina. There the Patriot killed, wounded, or captured hundreds of British soldiers. Daphne was said to be the only black soldier at the Battle of Kettle Creek. When he was seriously wounded with a rifle ball to his hip, a white soldier, Gil Harris, took him to his nearby farm and nursed him back to health, a faithful companion. Darby never forgot Harris' kindness. Freed by his master after the war, he went to work for Harris. When Harris' son, William, was ready for college, Daphne went along to look after him. He often entertained young William and his classmates with stories of the struggles between the Patriots and the British soldiers. After graduation, Daphne worked to support William while he continued his studies in law. When young William passed the bar exam required to practice law, Daphne wept with joy. Daphne had no children of his own. Finally honored. Although it was years before his courage in the war was recognized, Daphne was finally awarded for his heroism. In 1821, the Georgia legislation gave him a 112-acre farm. Daphne formed friendship with wealthy neighboring plantation owners. He became owner of many fine horses. Being a landowner helped him receive a pension for his military service. It is believed he is buried in the Harris Family Cemetery. In 1977, the Pekingese Georgia chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution included Austin Daphne on a monument in Griffith Memorial Park. William Lee, Patriot, a bodyguard slave. William Lee was purchased by a young officer by the name of George Washington in the year 1768. William Lee, from the time they met, was Washington's faithful servant. Lee was by Washington's side at almost every minute of the Revolutionary War. Here to my left is a picture of George Washington leaning on cannon with a bodyguard Billy Lee in background. It was custom for all officers to bring their top slaves along with them to act as aides and bodyguards. Many bodyguard slaves gave their lives for freedom. Here to my right, here's Billy Lee rowing boat in surprise attack on British on December 25, 1776 on an icy night crossing the Delaware at the Battle of Trenton. Lee shared danger, victories, and defeats with Washington and was the general's closest companion and friend. Before and after the war, Billy Lee was the first A bodyguard slave to live in the White House. Billy Lee was a patriot hero for his country. Nancy Hart, patriot, spy, war hero. She loved her country. Nancy Hart took care of her family. While her husband served in the war, she was a spy. She dressed up as a simple-minded man and wandered into the British camps with her ears wide open. She gathered information and passed it along to the Patriots. One evening in the year 1778, a group of British soldiers invaded her home. She served them wine and got them all drunk. Then, as they relaxed, she then drew her gun and shot two of the men dead. She also fought in the Battle of Kettle Creek, fought in February 14, 1779. Winning this battle prevented the British from invading Georgia. Nancy Hart, spy, patriot for her country. Edward Ned Hector, 1744-1834, patriot American hero. The Battle of Brandywine in Pennsylvania saw many black soldiers in George Washington's ranks. None of them more braver or more patriotic than artilleryman Edward Hector. 17,000 British and German soldiers marched against Philadelphia in the late summer of 1777. 
To meet this danger on the capital, General George Washington placed his army along Brandywine Creek. Artillerymen Edward Hector's artillery battery poured shots and shells into the enemy ranks until the charging redcoats were among the guns. Americans then began to flee, leaving guns, ammunition, horses, and wagons to the British. During the battle, the order was given to a bandit post. A few soldiers began to run, and then hundreds fled in fear. Into the mad rush for life, Hector shouted, Never! I'll save my horses and my wagons, or die myself. Ignoring the struggle around him, he gathered up muskets left on the battlefield. Through what seemed a miracle, he and his horses escaped injury. He saved wagon loads of ammunition and guns. In a small town of controversy located northwest of Philadelphia, it is a street named Hector. It honors Edward Hector's act of bravery in the American Revolution. Edward Hector, Patriot, American Hero. Mary Lickwood Hayes, alias Molly Pitcher. Molly was at Valley Forge with her husband. In many cases, whole families would follow behind soldiers because families couldn't support themselves without their husbands. William Hayes was Molly's husband. It was what she did at the Battle of Manumouth on June 28, 1778 that became legendary. She earned her nickname Molly Pitcher by bringing pitcher after pitcher of cool spring water to the exhausted, thirsty soldiers. She also tended to the wounded. She even carried a crippled soldier to safety on her back. On her next trip for water, she found her husband wounded. Molly stepped forward and took the ram from the cannon from her husband's hands and moved to work the cannon. She never missed a beat. She manned the cannon for hours until it came. Molly Pitcher, patriot, woman who loved her country. James Fortin, powder boy, drummer boy, Love ships. James Fortin's father came to America as a slave from Africa. James was born free in Philadelphia on September 2nd, 1766. James' father worked at the harbor unloading cargo ships. When James was seven, his father fell to his death from one of the ships. James loved sailing ships. He quit school at the age of 14 and signed up as a powder boy, drummer boy in the Navy to help defend his country. He carried gunpowder to men firing on enemy ships. Towards the end of the Revolutionary War, his ship, the Royal Lewis, was captured by British soldiers. And he was sent to a prison ship. James was shoved into the ship's smelly hole deep below the deck, along with thousands of other prisoners. He was forced to live on wormy meat, crust of moly bread, and stinking water. After seven months of long, hard labor, and the smelly cargo hold of the prison ship, James was set free. At the tender age of 14, James loved his country and went to war to defend her. James Frontier, a true patriot for his country. As he grew older, he became a successful businessman and a leader against slavery. He was free, but his people were not. He wanted to help his people. James 14, a patriot and hero for his people. Salem Poor, Gallant Soldier. When the Revolutionary War began at Lexington and Concord, Poor joined the Patriot forces. Like Peter Salem, he had a steady hand and eye. He too killed a British officer, Lieutenant Colonel James Abercrombie, at the siege of Charleston, Massachusetts in the Battle of Bunker Hill. The Patriots held their position at Bunker Hill until they ran out of ammunition. Patriot officers praised Salem Poor, writing to the Massachusetts General Court that Poor behaved like an experienced soldier in his gallant and brave action as he fought in Captain Ames' Fry Regiment. Poor remained in the Army for many years. He fought in the Battle of White Plains, New York, and lived through the bitter winter in Valley Forge. In 1975, Salem Poor, African American Patriot image, appeared on a United States Post stamp. Salem Poor, Patriot. American hero, gallant soldier. Phyllis Wheatley was only seven or eight years old when she was kidnapped and taken from her home in West Africa as a slave ship brought her to Boston in the year 1761. Knowing nothing about talent, she would soon know the world. J. 
John Wheatley, a prosperous tailor, and his wife Susanna purchased the young girl directly from a slave ship and named her Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley was a great poet. She was born in Africa and was brought to America as a slave. She was so gifted with words that her owners taught her to read and write. At the tender age of 17, Wheatley became the first black woman to have a book of poetry published. She wrote patriotic poems during the Revolutionary War. She even wrote one for General George Washington. Phyllis Wheatley married John Peters, a free black man in 1778, and published three more poems. Phyllis Wheatley, poet, American patriot. She loved her country. James Armstead, slave volunteer. James is remembered as the most important spy of the Revolutionary War. In 1781, Armstead was 21 years of age. General Lathan, an ally with the French army, needed someone to spy on the British. James, the slave, volunteered to spy on the British. James went to British camp and offered to be a servant and guide for his freedom. No one suspected he was a spy. Often he aided British General Cornwallis, top commander of the entire British army, in his tent, keeping his ears and eyes wide open for talk about the war. James knew being discovered would mean sure death. General Cornwallis asked James would he spy on the colonists for the British. James agreed, as he promptly reported this information to General Lathan of the French army. General Lathan gave James false information to give to General Cornwallis that helped lead to the end of the war. Hence, born the first double agent, James Armstead, patriot, spy, American hero for his people. George Washington, hero, patriot, slave owner. Here, George Washington and bodyguard Billy Lee to my right here in Virginia at Washington's estate. Washington owned over 200 slaves. Washington, like all slave owners in that era, believed that skin color had a lot to do with intelligence. The more European blood you had, the more intelligent you were. The darker you were, the less intelligent you were. All Washington's house slaves were light skinned. All his field slaves were dark skinned. A strange thing happened in 1775, months after the Battle of Bunker Hill. Army officers prevented black soldiers from enlisting. When Washington was gathering soldiers for his army, he was told to exclude black men. African Americans could not understand this. Why should we be turned away? Hadn't they fought bravely all through 1775? There were a number of reasons for this new policy. White slave owners were complaining to the government they did not want the slaves to become free joining the army. They said the government should respect their rights to their property. The government agreed. By December 1776, Washington and other generals had to change their policies. When thousands of white Americans refused to enlist at all, when others marched away from the army camps at the end of their short terms, regardless of the country's danger, the American army could not survive without the African American soldier. Washington had to change his policy. Without African American patriots, would America still be America today? Let us all remember and honor our ancestors, those ancestors that died so we could be free. Thank you. African American men and women, heroes of the Revolutionary War. Here are the websites and book titles where I got all my information. Please research this information to verify these facts. Thank you.